another installment of me talking and showing you the progress that I made with the mindful hedonism. At this point, I'm more in the mindset of less but better. So I'm trying to use up things that I enjoy. I'm trying to get rid of resell or regift or just just throw away um, makeup items that no longer I just no longer kind of fit me or like don't, no longer bring me joy. I don't want to force myself to use anything. And I'm trying to make substantial progress in getting to know the new items so I can finally make a decision: do they stay? Do they go? Do what do you think about the brand? The perfume star of this decluttering cleanup is Near Dusk by Jennifer Aniston. Uh, this here's like a little tip and trick for you. If you have some perfumes that you don't, you kind of like but you don't really wear, uh, since they are over 90% alcohol and only like I don't know 10 to 13% fragrance, you can easily clean up the space with them. And basically, all my makeup collection from now on for at least a few days will have this super pleasant coconutty flavor to it every time I open a shelf. All right, here we go. Basics. I will see. Color and special effects. Here we go. I think this should work. Then we, you know what, I'm gonna move color here. We're gonna have singles and I'm gonna find a tray for liquid eyeshadows and pigments. Voila. Check this out. Huh? Beautiful. Beautiful, I think. And eyeliners. Eyeliners gonna be here. Yes, no, yes. All right. So this is all of the eyeshadow and kind of like colors for the eye type of shelf. First shelf that I have on top is the face palettes and like face kind of stuff. I'm fairly confident I can go through and quickly tell you what I have. This is the stash of powders I'm slowly working through, <laughs> which is a slow process. I think I know what I'm gonna get rid of. I feel like I'm fairly confident in what's gonna happen here. First of, first thing first, um, the what I'm gonna get rid of is a Color Revolution stick, eyesh not, it's not eyeshadow stick, it's face stick, what is it called? Fast Base Stick Foundation. There was a lot of talk about this being best ever. To me, uh, besides difficulty of finding your shade, it's very gooey and it kinda clogs my pores and never looks natural, ever. So I am actually gonna let, let go of this one. It's fairly new, I only use it a couple of times. The same goes for CoverGirl True Blend Undercover. Okay, I'm not showing it in the camera, haha. -ha. So here's the revolution. And here is the, the, the CoverGirl. Um, just both are way too pigmented for their own good, to be honest. They're just not, cutting it when it comes to blendability in how natural it really looks on the skin. So I'm letting go of both of them. Then the e.l.f. What is it? Bronzer, I think, in Cool. Uh, I kept it because I didn't have a dark bronzer or dark contour for a long time. But ultimately, I don't really need it because now I do have a palette from Cover FX that does have a dark enough contouring shade for me. And this is more than enough. So this is gonna, uh, gonna depart my collection. The Duo by Wonder Beauty, Trip for Two. Love it. Cover FX face palette. It has its downfalls and downsides, but still fairly good. The new uh, concealers I'm trying and pinning against Maracuja by Tarte that's been reformulated and I don't know if it's discontinued or not. Um, I actually have it in the newer form as well here. So this is both by It Cosmetics. They're fine. I can't say that they are as good as Tarte. I have Becker old palette here, but it stays. I like it. Um, let me show you since we're at it. Uh, it's one of those like, what is it? Be a light baked powder collections. Decent, decent baked powders. I like them. I think they're on par with Hourglass baked products and Laura Geller baked products. So happy to to keep them. 
um, powder light beige by Tarte. They're like powder foundation. I think it's okay. I don't think it's super anything special, but I'm gonna keep it because I'm kind of working through my powders. The new thing in my collection, Kevin Aquan uh, foundation balm. Can't say that I like it. I tried it a few times, just, just doesn't quite sit on my skin the way that I would appreciate. So I'm gonna let go of it while it's still new. Um, foundation by Clinique Fine, Dolce Gabbana, Dolce Gabbana The One Foundation Fine, like it actually. Uh, BB Dr. Jart, love it. These are two of my favorite BB creams. One is Eat Cosmetics, one is the Golden BB Cream by Dr. Jart. Then these are slowly drying up, so I'm gonna be using them up and just discarding. One is Too Dark, Milani Conceal and Perfect, and Revlon Color Stay. Just, they're okay, they're, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw them away. I'm just I'm done. I have like a very decent foundation by Dolce Gabbana. I have my BB creams and my powders, so I don't really need that. Whew, that actually makes me feel good. Not gonna lie. And we have space now to put my concealers on display. The Elf bronzer in San Lucia, the lightest bronzer that they used to have in the baked form. It's a bit stiff and um, I spent some time looking for bronzers that would be light enough for my skin and happy to say that I found them in 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 Wonder Beauty. So this is uh, this is this works just fine as well as the Becca bronzer so I can finally let go of the e.l.f. bronzer because the formula it's okay it, it works it obviously works it's just not ideal <laughs> let's just say that. A special effects kind of like this gel glitter for the skin by Stila looks mesmerizing on the body okay it doesn't smell like anything I'm very happy I need I need to use it more aggressively still it's sti since it's still summer and this kind of stuff goes bad fairly quickly my highlighters let's go through highlighters uh, wet and wild uh, infamous blossom glow it's very metallic highlighter. Um, it's fine. It's the cheapest metallic highlighter you can find that's very good quality, kind of gel quality. Unfortunately, I broke my cover effects in Moonlight, which is right now probably one of my favorite highlighters because it's not too subtle, not too metallic, but you see, like, it's a complete ruin. So, Unfortunately, but it's still gonna last me like probably 10 years even like <laughs> even though I lose like a tenth of it every time I open the the box Anything else you've seen highlighter by Kat Von D. I showed you the Stila one that I'm painting uh, The two highlighters though. I use them as illuminating powders mostly. This is Laura Geller in the color French vanilla Okay, and I think when it comes to bronzers, that's it. Basically three palettes. Each of them has a bronzer that does it for me. Each of them also has a sort of like peachy pink blush. That's fine. Let's go to blushes. Uh, this was a gift from a colleague who brought it from China. This is like some kind of like limited edition collaboration of a Chinese beauty brand with a museum of either history or arts in China. So everything here has a purpose and a meaning. Unfortunately, I'm not um, very well versed in in the um, in the culture to really tell you what it is all about. But I'm, I, I can tell you one thing: it's a beautiful blush, for sure. It's so well made. The packaging is incredible. There was like used to be like a flower pattern here. I love it. This is kind of like a coralista, but more like satin type of blush. Uh, I love the limited edition packaging by Kiko for their big products. I always try to get one or two when they're on sale. I, I love, I love the way that they package this stuff. It's very high-end kind of look. And their big products are very decent. Here I have double color Lively Coral. To be honest, all their limited editions look and feel the same, so you don't have to um, try to find this particular one. Just keep in mind that the baked face products by Kiko in this type of packaging are very good, especially if you can find, find them on sale. Penning and doing a great job at that. Check this out, huh? 
This is uh, Cindy Luminizer Peachy Highlight with Rose or kind of like somewhat rosy glow. I use it as a shimmery blush. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, it's very fragile though. It breaks very easily. My new Neo, what is it? Is it Neo blush? How is it called? The Neo blush Rose Cliff by Kevin Aquan, my newest blush. Love it. I heavily, very heavily use it on the peachy side and much less so on the mauve side. Probably that will be more used in winter or like for darker lip looks. Love it. Absolutely happy with the purchase. I love these, the how laconic eloquent the packaging is. I like the soft satin formula. I'm a little bit tired of metallic blushes and metallic highlighters, so the good quality satins is for me all the rage, and Kevin Aquan, their neon blushes are like classic satin texture that I absolutely adore. This is really old, really, really old, and I feel at this point I might have replacements for this Tarina Tarantino blush. Let's see. It's a little bit warmer, but like this is so old, I'm not sure it's safe to use anymore. Oh, Neapolitan Lane. I've had it for years. It still smells good, still performs fairly decent. No, I can't. I still find that the other blushes are too peachy or too pink, and this particular kind of like nudie, it's, it's a perfection of a formulation for my skin tone, so I'm gonna keep it. Another Kiko, I don't like the packaging as much, this like metallic, blushes that they have. I only keep it because it has beautiful cool tone, um, kind of like almost purpley shift while the base is warm terracotta. Um, if I find something that just does a better job in terms of the formula, I'll probably swap this, but so far it does, it, it does what it needs to do. All right, these are all my face products. I am very happy with what I have. I must say I've been, I'm very proud that I've been doing a great job paring things down. I'm almost, almost out of this Laura Geller French vanilla, as you can see. So I, I'll just continue to work on it. I think I have very decent amount of uh, color products and face products. And basically I'm holding, I'm holding strong. I'm trying not to buy anything new when it comes to the department of face makeup. We are good here. All right, the next second shelf contains like a flat display in this iridescent little plates of my blu uh, blushes, brushes, face brushes, eye brushes, and I clean them every once in a while. I even have a spot cleaner here. Then my face brushes, like a smaller kabuki style. Backup of mascaras. This is Monsieur Big, like three of them. That's kind of crazy. Um, my brow products. This is another backup mascara. These are two that I'm using up. Um, I like the Buxom one and Maxi Lash by Guerlain is out of crap. I can't believe it was ever popular, but I guess like mascaras really changed since the since the day when Guerlain released its Maxi Lash. Um, when it comes to brow products, I've been doing a really good job paring them down, so I'm gonna continue with that. I have two, one of my favorites that are perfect for warmer blonde colors and darker blonde colors. This is Wet n Wild Coal Eyeliner, which really is not appropriate for the eyes, but perfect for darker and dirty blonde brows. A more grayer, one, this is a European release, uh, Isidora and Laura Geller. That is a bit too dark for me, but you never know. One of those days I might just change the color of my hair and I'll need the cooler tone, cooler tones again. So I think here I'm fine. I decluttered a lot of the brushes already, so here I'm also fine. Nothing else to let go. This is like amazing. I'm just showing me, at this point, I'm just showing you how it's stored. And the only concern that I have that I have three backups of the same mascara, but you know, I might gift one or two if the opportunity presents itself. It's just, I just got them all in a really good deal. So that's fine. Okay, super happy with this, super happy with this. The most difficult one was eyeshadows. And I think I did a fairly good job letting, letting go of many. So this is painful. 
I don't know why it is so easy for me to get rid of face products, for example, that don't work. But when it comes to lip products, I rarely meet a lip product that is truly horrific. So I keep hoarding them and I can't let go of them until they completely rot. And yet I just bought like a whole collection of new lipsticks that I love that are beautiful in the packaging, in the form and everything. But like some of my older ones, I just, <sighs> I'm struggling. This is a real struggle, guys. I need to let go of them. I just need to convince myself to finally part with them. Okay, I think we need a swatch party. I'm gonna play with it for a little bit and we'll start decluttering together. A few things will be easy. I'm letting go of both my Kiko Milana lipsticks. This is their kind of main line. One of them is peachier, another one is pinkier. Beautiful new colors, but to be completely honest, I have a superior formula in Marc Jacobs and a Pat McGrath. And these lipsticks, the shades are all right, but the formula is a little bit kind of paste-like. Um, it's a very generic, very cheap and generic. So I'm gonna let go of these two. The two small, this I think it was a duo actually that I bought together, duo of NARS lipsticks. Absolutely hate NARS packaging. It's filthy, it gets so bad so quickly. This is, I'm actually panning. This is like a neutral beige pink, I would say, kind of mauvey pink. And that is Dolce Vita, semi-transparent gel color, nothing special. Uh, and a more matte, very opaque, kind of grayish. It's beige and gray. Not the biggest fan of matte lipsticks by NARS. And I do have similar colors, I'm fairly sure, in the new lipstick range that I have. So I'm letting that go. I'm letting go of Essence Water Kiss Gloss. I actually do enjoy these glosses. It's just the color is a little bit darker compared to what I like. And when it comes to sort of cool toned orchid-like tones, I have this more a little bit berry gel oil kind of formula by Revlon. Um, this is, I think, glow lip oil, really delightful. Um, lip lip oil gels. I also have a fairly old gel lipstick by Urban Decay which is a purple. So I think between these two I'm fine, I'm good. I'll keep these two because I don't have colors like that in, uh, in other newer shades. I think the only one that I have that is truly cool is one of the Pat McGraths. Here it is. I think it's a beauty junkie. But this is a very bright color, so when it comes to something a little bit more subdued and transparent, I think these two will do. Okay, oddly enough, I think we're done with cooler tones. Oh, there is one special color that I have, which is astonishing, bright, opaque purple. I only keep it for video kind of stuff. Subfire Siren Matte Lip Color by Maybelline, but I haven't used it in, I don't know how long, forever. Oh, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. Actually, one new lipstick that I'm gonna let go of is Marc Jacobs, because it's too light for me. It's a very light pink. Potentially, you can use it for highlighting the center of your lip. I just, I'm just not fussy that way, and um, the color is Strange Magic. That will go to the pile to give away. What else do we have here? This is another special effects lipstick. I got it real cheap from Laura Geller. Broadway Glitz. And this is kind of like this duochrome color. It's just this particular one. It's a bit gritty and I think it looks much, much better on darker skin tone than on me. On me it looks a little bit zombie-like, a little bit like a bruise on my lips. Uh, so I'm gonna give it away. Let's go through other in very bright or dark colors that I have. I think it will be a little bit easier because nudes is gonna be a bloodbath. Um, NYX Lingerie Push Up Long Lasting Lipstick, basically a matte lipstick. I don't need many of these because I very rarely use them, but every time I use it, it looks really stunning on the pictures for whatever reason. So 
Um, I'm keeping this conditional that there I don't have anything remotely similar. So it's kind of like in a maybe pile right now. The beautiful, very kind of like terracotta red color by, what is it, Laura Mercier. And this is Maya. Love it. That's fairly new, not new, but fairly new in my collection. So that's a definite keep. Mm, let's watch because it seems similar. This is an oldie. This, these are the ones that just have such good formula. This is Bourjois lipsticks. They look cheap, but this beautiful colors, creamy for, formulas, 05. And I, these are the ones I've been struggling with. I just can't quite, they still smell, smell fine. Can't quite let go of them. But look, isn't that? Isn't that somewhat close and reminiscent? Okay, I'm forcing myself to put them in the to-go pile. Okay, another bright that I have is, it's the only one that I have. It's kind of like a fuchsia hot pink slash red. And this is an Olme lipstick. It's kind of matte, not the best formula. I don't like matte really lipsticks in general but it's a very bright color and it's fairly new, so it still should be good. So I'm gonna keep it for the variety's sake. Um, an old, old lipstick by Urban Decay. Also, can't quite part with it because I don't have anything as dark and vampy, but I had it for a long ass time, to be honest. Still smells fine, performs fine, okay gonna keep it a beautiful raspberry red kind of color metallic by essence love the performance love the color zero three keep it another beautiful metallic by them but very unusual color it's kind of like a teal blue special effects Smells fine, I'll keep it. I mean, these two are mostly for special occasion, maybe Halloween makeup, body makeup, video, things like that. So, oh, am I, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing very well. Um, another metallic, this I love. This is a beige kind of rose gold metallic by Essence. Really beautiful, cheap metallic lipstick. I wear it not very often, but every time I do, I enjoy it. All right. I confess, I'm stalled. This is my problem. See? This is my comfort zone when it comes to color. Any, like basically my lips but better kind of situation. And they're all very similar. And I'm trying to force myself to part with this one, which is 04 by a Rouge Bunny. Oh, well, sorry, Rouge Bunny Rouge. Bourgeois. The problem is, and I just put it on my lips, it's still in perfect condition, but I hate the packaging. It's so run down. I had it for a while. It's almost unpleasant to, to hold it, but this, th th that's the lipstick 04, but it's so similar to something else that I have, and it's so old. I... Oh, I don't understand what's the problem. Why can't I part with, with lip, lip colors? I, I have these delusional idea that I could potentially pan them, but I'll be honest with you, I've already, you've seen, I almost panned a highlighter, but I haven't panned a lip color. That just never happens to me. I apply lipstick and then I completely forget to reapply it or refresh it. So the use of lip colors in my collection is absolutely minimal, despite me loving lip colors. <sighs> I must. This is just disgusting. The packaging is just so run down. Okay, I'm letting go of this one. Doesn't make everything else any easier. I'll be completely honest with you. This color, this kind of like dark, plummy gray almost. This is a matte by Maybelline, uh, brown blush, 575. And I only want to keep it because I don't have anything like it, but it it's kind of makes me look dead. I almost never ever use it and I don't like matte lip colors. They ruin my lips within one day. I'm gonna let go. Okay. It's, oh gosh. You probably can hear by my voice I'm so stressed out for no reason whatsoever. Another candidate to leave is a Clarins, uh, Clarins, 
however you want to say it. It's kind of like a strawberry milkshake color, Jolie Rouge 756. And this is this kind of a creamy red. Beautiful color, everything is great with it, but I do have newer colors that are very similar and I just haven't been reaching for it at all. So, oh, I do have similar ones. I think these two are, mm, <laughs> this is Marc Jacobs ones and this is a Tropicalia by uh, Pat McGrath. And this is another slightly darker red gel balm by Beth McGrath and like some lighter, more peachy, kind of like salmon peachy milkshakes. Okay, I'm letting go of this one. <sighs> the more I swatch and try them on my lips, the more I realize that not only I need to get rid of some older colors, like this one by Revlon, I think this is called Raspberry Freeze 485. This pearl, a very elegant uh, type of, this is it actually, a uh, very elegant raspberry kind of berry color. Um, beautiful, elegant color, but really old packaging, really old lipstick. It's still fine and prefers fine, but like I never wear it because there's no reason. I guess I'm just less, less adventurous with my lip colors than I am with eyeshadows. And I guess that's what I'm realizing because I have a lot of dupes not only, on, not only in the old colors and I'm gonna let go of this one, but in the new ones as well. These are the swatches of the new lipsticks I have and some of them are very close dupes, such as Pat McGrath, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, Valletta 406 and Marc Jacobs Shakedown. It's like... Okay, Valletta might be a little bit more pink, a little bit more pasty and slightly lighter and shake down a little bit more peachy. But again, you'll be hard pressed to find between all three a sizable difference. The third one is Eat Cake by Marc Jacobs. This is like much cooler tone, but like these three damn close, very damn close. So not only I have to somehow just cut, cut the cancer and finally let go of this huge amount of lipsticks. Uh, I also have to really get more aggressive about wearing my lip colors and get rid of uh, and pare down some of the newer ones in the next year, which is a terif terrifying thought. But I think, I think I'm ready. So all of this is gonna go and I'm just gonna show you the rest of things that I do have. And I really do want to start using my new, newer, like, more expensive lipsticks more often and it's impossible while I like, sort of like hold on to so many older ones that I'm trying to use up. It's just like, it's ridiculous. You're using up things that it's expired while the new beautiful expensive things that you just got are sitting there getting expired, so. This is my earnest attempt to stop, stop with that kind of mentality. So I have three new by my Marc Jacobs. I have, uh, let's count, three by Pat McGrath. They are usual, what is it called? Uh, looks trance. I have Tropicalia, Peach, here it is. Can you see it? Can you see it? That's Tropicalia. It's Peach. I have Beauty Junkie. That is... Uh, la, 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 la. where is it? It's like cool tone orchid, the only one that I really have in the bright color. Valletta, which is one of these, kind of nudie, my lips but better. And I have two balms, one peachy, uh, this one, uh, that is called, yeah, this one, passion, passion flower. 524, which is already, I found, they are dupes of each other. With Marc Jacobs, uh, they're gonna like liquid, but in gel form formula. I absolutely love it. It's so super juicy. And the color here is Preach 560. And they are like brother and sister. They basically are these apricotty with apricotic base with slightly pinky, iridescence to it. 
beautiful colors, beautiful packaging. I guess I prefer Pet McGrath just a little bit more, but Marc Jacobs one has unprecedented shine. It's just so shiny, so juicy. Mm, lips look like a dessert when you put it on. So you see like, I gosh, I keep acquiring dupes without me knowing it. And see the deeper red balm, I think this is it. By Pat McGrath, again, the fact my lips are better and actually these two balms, they give a decent moisturization to the skin. Another milkshake color that I'm trying to pan, both of them. These are matte lipsticks, kind of like pencil lipsticks by Buxom. They have slightly minty smell, I love them. I'm trying to use them up. When it comes to lip glosses, I do have... Oh, this is a special effects top coat by Stila. Basically gives like a bluish uh, matte sparkle if you put it on top of a lipstick. Three, no wait, 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 four. Four lip glosses, two lip oils by Revlon. I think it was a limited edition, but it's a really good formula. I do enjoy them. Semi-transparent kind of lip gels kind of, kind of thing. They don't last long, but they, they really feel good. And a some transparent Milani Moisture Lock Peach Seed Oil Infused Lip Treatment. I basically use it by itself or on top of any lip color. It's, it gives beautiful shine. It smells a little bit synthetic peach-like, but it's not too bad. And this was a gift. This is an iridescent lip gloss kind of like a duochrome by Huda. It's okay, um, wouldn't really purchase anything from Huda at this point, I'm just not, I'm just not in love with, with, with it, especially considering the price. Okay, and the super old one that I'm trying to use up, but to be honest, this is the best liquid lipstick that I have, and I just, I can't part with it, I love it. Even though it's ancient, this is Laura Geller Color Drenched Lip Gloss in the color Café Au Lait. But the formula is the best of all of them that I have. And once I'm done with it, I will have to find something that could even be remotely as good as this one. I absolutely love it. And this is the exception. This is old as I don't know what. Still smells good, performs beautifully, super rich, super juicy, super glossy. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is like an oldie that I will definitely pan. So three ones that I'm trying to pan. These are all the kind of the ones that are still in good shape plus Laura Mercier. Um, these are the ones that I really want to start wearing more aggressively. And we have a few special colors that are I use rarely for, you know, certain looks. And all of them are not very expensive, so I'm happy to keep them. So it's not like a huge waste if they go bad. One is a matte, darker color by Mix Lingerie. Uh, two kind of blue, bl teal blue by Essence. Matte purple by, who is that again? Maybelline, a dark berry by Urban Decay, bright fuchsia red by Almay. Two kind of both special effects metallic lipsticks, but I wear them in real life. This is 03 and 01. This, this metallic line by Essence was really, really good. It was so cheap and it like really delivered on the metallic lips perfectly. And, oh, this is also I'm panning, kind of like this neutral pink by NARS. This is gonna be done as soon as I can, be done with it. And sheer purple orchid color by Urban Decay. All right, I think this is more manageable, still unmanageable and still has dupes, despite my best efforts to diversify, but I guess I'm realizing I'm becoming a little bit of a bore when it comes to lip colors. This is how I decided to divide them. This is warm tone, peach, apricots, beiges, anything that I consider to be warm tone. This is cool tone, and these are special effects. Yep, I think this is, this is better than it was. And a whole other box, I'm gonna be sorting something to throw away, and if something is newer, I'll kinda just like cut part of the lipstick and I'll include it in the piles on Mercari. Again, if you're grossed out by used makeup, 
don't <laughs> don't buy it don't like get it but some people want at least to be able to experience the formula and swatch it if not to wear themselves at least on somewhere in the skin so it's again like i'm i'm providing it as a basically free resource for whoever wants to play with it on some level you have to kind of make your own judgment whether you want to try this stuff or not Whew. This is all. This is all that I'm giving away. I sorted some lipsticks to newer ones that I think at least are good for swatches and those that I would not really feel comfortable anybody touching but me. And yeah, this is what we get. I think I did a decent job. I'm very happy with the eyeshadow declutter. Um, very con fairly confident, not much to declutter in terms of face products and lip colors. Oof, that was brutal. I'm not gonna lie, I need a drink. A stiff one. So this is the face drawer. This is the first drawer. So all of the powders, all of my complexion products and the color products for the face. Then we get brushes and look, I actually found a perfectly sized little box to put the brow products and the uh, mascaras. So brushes here. And then we get to the eyeshadows. Check this out. I think it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And basically like extras, false eyelashes and the lip colors, which I sorted by the cool, uh, cool warm tone, which I have way more of and special effects. So that was, that was interesting. Probably some unpopular opinions. I must say I'm not the biggest fan of like oh, like buying things that are when they're hot. I'm a bit of a like a kind of contrarian by nature. I don't like buying bestsellers. It's not my thing. So I waited substantial amount of time before I acquired all of these kind of like items new and old from the brands that are like on everybody's mind and I must say I find that over 70% of things that we buy that are hyped are just no longer going to be relevant in a year two at best so so far my bias has been confirmed to be honest so i'm just it's just more and more i'm learning that just trying to catch that wave of new names and these endless releases that just mimic each other it's not really doing anything for me in my life so I'm perfectly happy actually using makeup as it turns out I thought it was impossible I, I thought I couldn't live without following the industry without talking about the new things and it turns out I'm perfectly happy without and at this point it feels like a burden to know about the new products it's almost like you're trashing your head with a database of like stock items like why i would rather be putting the ideas in my mind and actually doing makeup looks and using this stuff it turns out it's not that bad not to care about new makeup really not that bad you do learn to enjoy using it and actually the more you do it the more you see it the more things pop at you and the more you kind of it's, it's like it's a multiverse, it's like a multi-dimensional feeling which the chasing of shopping and the chasing of new things never really did for me. I know very well, painfully too well, the thrill of shopping. Just trust me, we don't need to go into it any more than, <laughs> than I did with the how like I over shopped, like how I became obsessed with shopping in terms of perfumes, which is way more expensive of a hobby than makeup shopping, believe me. But I'm very painfully familiar with how, how it gets you, like how that trigger makes you want a new thing again and again. But I must say it's not nearly as captivating as when you get deeper and deeper into creation mode. That means using it creating it, co combining it, mixing shadows, mixing formulas, doing all these kind of like different things. That's just 
that's just more fulfilling it's like it, it, it's some it's a deep nourishing drive that I'm really really enjoying at this point so I see no point at this point to correct the course I think I will probably become even more strict on the kind of makeup I buy because I think I have a lot I have a lot the only the only things that I'm still looking for are some very very high quality unique shades in eyeshadows like a few a few kind of neon pastels a few glimmery or multi-chrome shades that I might be trying probably from indie brands more so we'll see we'll see but so far I'm very happy with what I have and like I'm I'm I was astonished at how many looks I could create with the makeup that I have but so far I will be honest I was astonished at like how many makeup looks I could create with what I have without even glancing toward new releases so go figure it's probably all just waves it comes and goes like obsession with new things obsession with things you have maybe apathy and just losing any interest in it I, w I wonder like do you do you go through stages like that or are you more or less like even in the way that you see makeup are you consistently obsessed are you consistently apathetic or like how, how does it work for you because I definitely I'm going through like this kind of a spirals like every so many years it, it's just this history keeps repeating itself i don't know if it's good or bad we'll see anyway thank you so much for watching we'll be waiting for your thoughts in the comments just kind of like to chat in the comments down below and i'll see you in the next video